Well, hello you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Athlet Zephon. Scorch Fountain. Where it is the 20th of Limestone, 1184. Early autumn of our 21st year here in the fortress. Time is bumbling by on the back of a horn beetle, isn't it? Things are relatively calm for the time being. After those last few raids that we launched against those necromancer-led bandits, we've kind of just been relaxing here at home putting out some fires, some of which have been literal, the whole magma crab incident there. And you know, I wish I could say things have settled down a bit, but I guess they really haven't. We have some things to go over. Well, first and foremost, over this way here you can see our forge area, and there has been some changes, should be readily apparent. You can see here that we've built some nice sturdy walls around the magma. Makes things look a little bit more cluttered in here, that's for sure, but it'll be a little safer anyways. Just considering the fact that magma crabs could pop up at any time. Don't want any more accidents, really. Now, what we've done here is built these big walls around the forges. And in those walls are a bunch of tiny little gaps. And in each of those gaps is a cage trap, each equipped with a copper cage. Now, this is in no means a foolproof way to deal with those bastards. But anything safer would require uh, some huge workarounds. Not anything we're too interested in going through with. And so what we're going to have to do is just keep our ears open for those bastards. And if we hear them working their way through the magma tubes, then we're going to have to evacuate this area and just hope those crabs get caught in these cage traps. That would actually be really cool, because then we might be able to use them for something. For what? Not too sure. But seeing those magma globs fly through the air like that really inspires a dwarf. At this point, I'm actually hoping we get more of them, but we'll see. Uh, you know what, just realized, while we're doing this overview, we should be sending our dwarves out still. We haven't attacked the Sable Moistness in quite a while. Yeah, let's do that. Doesn't really matter where we attack, I guess. Just gonna keep burning westward, raising anything we come across. I will note too that while our warriors are headed out, well, their armor has been upgraded quite a bit recently. Yes, all of our warriors now have steel helmets, which you already knew about, as well as steel breastplates and greaves. Isn't that something? just have their boots and gauntlets to upgrade now. And if we're able to do that, then our forces will be nigh impervious. Very exciting. And while we're on the subject of armor, just over here in our temple, you can see Winx, the damned one. Yeah, she's still doing fine over here. Hanging in there, certainly. At this point, it's quite obvious that she's taken on many of the traits that Eral the Silent has. She's kind of just checked out, unfortunately. But she's still around. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's a matter of perspective, I suppose. If you have a look at her mindset here, you can see she doesn't really mind anything at all. She's completely incapable of feeling anything anymore, both positive and negative. Also, she did suffer some wounds in the fight with that magma crab there, but she's healed up from most of it. The only wound she still has is that her right hand's fat is gone. It must have been that her hand got the worst of that fire, but it's still usable. At the end of the day, she can still make some damn fine armor, which is just excellent. Also, another thing I would like to mention is that her husband was not killed in that fighting. I definitely thought he went into that magma, but he did not. Yeah, he's still in the fortress, but he's out on that raid right now. He is a flail dwarf. And actually, another interesting point on that, the reason we even found out he was in the fortress is because he made an artifact after she died. He made the artifact in Wink's name, which really is something. Let's have a look at it real quick. Her husband's artifact is Zerilla Shock, Fire Times, a dog bone toy axe. So yes, just a toy, but it's still worth 63,000. This is a dog bone toy axe. All craft worship is of the highest quality. It is studded with copper and encircled with bands of dog bone, water buffalo leather, and cushioned daysite cabochons. This object menaces with spikes of bayberry wood and andesite. And on the item is an image of custard apple trees and rhodolite. And to finish it off, on the item is an image of a nightmare in clear zircon. Some could say that losing your wife in such a horrific manner and then having them return to life as an unfeeling undead creature in service of a dwarven fortress is a bit of a nightmare itself. Yeah, it's very interesting. Fire times. Yeah, the guy is still in the fortress but no longer has a relationship with his former wife. Curious to see if anything will happen there. I'll also note that our children are doing absolutely fine. They were, of course, shocked at their mother's death, but seemed fairly unfazed by her return to life. Probably for the best. Anyways, um, actually, something else we should put into play before we do any more exploring around the fortress is our little vampire project over here. Burr, the vampire, remember? She had just recently slain her lover, Arab and has since been in here terribly wounded. Not too sure what's wrong with her exactly, but I'm looking to get her out of there, get her cleaned up and fixed. She's a tough dwarf, 
It's undeniable. Seems like a waste just to keep her boxed up like this, you know? Baron Moldath has some plans for her. So let's get to it. Gonna have to keep a very close eye on her though. The whole blood sucking thing and all. Let's give it a try. Okay, door is unlocked. And we have a dwarf carrying her away to the hospital and has put her in a bed. Interesting. Yeah, okay, she's getting some rest. Hoping Doc Ironwood can work some magic with her. Hang in there, Burr. And please, no blood sucking, huh? Still on the subject of undead creatures. Over just down here in the scorching hall, you can see a necromancer. And no, it's not Moldath. Surprise, it's a new necromancer, but not a new face. <sighs> Embrace yourselves, because this here is Zan Idenkosh, the fortress's storyteller. Yeah, he's now a necromancer. Remember how I've said in the past that the dwarves go out on raids and they oftentimes bring back books? And we have to be very, very careful searching through those books, because sometimes the books might contain the secrets of life and death. And that's precisely how a dwarf becomes a necromancer. Well, we've been doing an awful lot of raiding lately, and admittedly there's been a few times where the dwarves have come back with books and we haven't really checked through them all too well. That being said, we haven't raided any necromancer towers in quite some time. So I don't know, I thought we were in the clear. Turns out to not be the case. Or the problem for that matter. That wasn't the problem. It wasn't at all. We found the book. Just down here, tucked away in our library, just like any other book, nestled safely away in one of our bookcases is The Art of Dying. Yes, this one here is the culprit. The Art of Dying, a yellow zircon bound codex. The written portion consists of a 61 page manual entitled The Art of Dying, authored by Moldath, the beardless craft moss. It concerns the secrets of life and death. The writing is thoroughly organized overall. The prose is masterful. That's right. This isn't some book we just picked up somewhere. Our damn Baron came in here at one point, wrote this book, and then just left it in the library for any old jerk to pick up and read. <laughs> isn't that something? What a damn troublemaker that guy is. Craziest thing. I guess we're going to have to be more careful. But, you know, it might just be that our Baron wants more necromancers in the fortress. They can be a useful tool to be sure. That much is obvious after we brought Winx back to life. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the goal was there, but we now have two necromancers. <laughs> More to come? I suppose we'll see. Checking back down at our hospital on our vampire friend. Still down here. Doc Ironwood is on the job though. Honestly, not even sure if she can still get around, really. Not too sure how extensive her wounds are. Anyways, I'm gonna hold up a second here. It looks like our warriors have returned. Let's see how they did. Okay, all right, they head in and pretty much just wipe the place out. Works for us. And we'll be sending them straight back out. They've had enough downtime, I think. We're going to split them up this time, though, just to hopefully speed things up a little bit. It should be fine. The last couple settlements we took over have been kind of easy. Looking down in our hospital. Oh, uh, vampire, where the hell'd you go? Ah, here we are. Oh, god damn it. It looks like she was able to suck a dwarf dry before we could catch up to her. Damn it. Well, you know, I'm thinking at this point it shouldn't be too, too hard to keep her from doing that again as long as we can keep a close eye on her. I imagine she's just going to be wandering around the fortress going bedroom to bedroom looking for sleeping dwarves. So as long as we can lock the doors, like this right here actually, she appears to be headed for this bedroom with Beetlebane inside. I'm gonna lock that door real quick. Yeah, that's right. Get the hell out of here, troublemaker. Now, what we were hoping to do is... Well, remember Moldath has those new quarters, the giant spacious quarters. What we would like to do is put her in there with him. Maybe they can talk a little bit. It's very well appointed in there, so it would be a pretty good place to relax a bit, I'm thinking. I guess we just thought it'd be neat to try to rehabilitate her. She's incredibly stressed out at the time being, but maybe if we can get her back up on her feet, we can do something interesting with her. Just a bit of an experiment, really. But I would like to give her some time just wandering around the fortress here to see if she can take care of some of her needs just before we lock her away again. She has a crutch now, but as far as clothing goes, uh, she has some bandages and thread sewn into her wounds. But other than that, she's completely naked. Not the best. I don't know, we'll see what happens, I guess. She does seem pretty intent on sucking blood from dwarves. Might have to figure out a different solution. We'll just keep an eye on her for now, I guess. Yeah, 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 I'm losing hope. Big time. The only thing she's been trying to do is suck blood from dwarves. And to be frank, it's getting a little tedious having to keep locking all those doors whenever she comes by. Yeah, it getting to be a bit much. Anyways, looks like those squads have just returned. Let's see how they did. 
All right, the first pair of squads heads out, led by Maffal, the big guy, and it does not have a single problem to speak of. Wondrous. And then we have Etenfo's squads. They run in, outmatch the forces there, easy enough, and the place is destroyed. Just what we like to see. Going to be heading out to two more places now, continuing our westward burn. And while they're out and away, we can have a look over here at Moldath's quarters. Because we did actually manage to get that vampire in here. Moldath's down here in his throne room. And if we look up to the top, we can see Burr in her bedroom, which is locked with a couple of hatch doors. Unlocking those now, though. And it looks like she's headed down. And I believe she's on her way to have a meeting with Moldath. She probably wants to address some complaints about her time here in the fortress. Oh, okay, here she comes. Uh, it looks like there's actually another dwarf in here too, a bow dwarf. We're gonna have to get them out. Anyways, yes, it looks like they just had a meeting in here. Very interesting. It says she was relieved while yelling at somebody in charge, and also relieved while crying on somebody in charge. That was a emotional meeting right there. Hold up just a second. Gonna try to scoot this other dwarf out of here. There they go. All right, having a look up here, we can see Burr, and she appears to have found some of the clothing that we left in her bedroom. That's good to see. Completely clothed now. Okay. Though it doesn't seem like she wants to come out of her bedroom. Right now she's just sitting in the corner. That is strange. She's not locked in right now. Oh. Hold up. Actually, here she goes. Looks to be headed down to the temple. And she's praying to Thukan, one of her gods. It's an interesting thing because Thukan is not one of our gods. I had almost forgotten that Burr is not from our civilization. She hails from the Fresh Theater, our cousins in the West. Actually, the Fresh Theater dwarves are the ones in that area that we're currently attacking. Yeah, we're mixing it up over there, but we still do have an alliance with them. And even if they did have a problem with us attacking those places around them, it's not like there's much they could do about it anyways. At this point, they're far weaker than we are. Well, no matter. Gonna leave these two at it for now. We're probably also going to let Moldap out from time to time as well. Don't really want to keep him locked up too long. Hmm, well that's something right there. We did have some magma crabs in our volcano, and I've been keeping an eye on them. They were nowhere near our forge area, but I happened to check in on them just now, and they were up on the surface. They must have come out of the top of the volcano. Honestly terrifying, because if there were any dwarves out there, there would be some serious problems, but there weren't, thankfully. And this one over here just wandered into a cage trap. So we do now have a caged magma crab. Intriguing. There is another one up here too, and I'm wondering if we can catch that one as well. Oh, but... Well, here's something. Actually just got a new artifact, and we haven't really been checking in on them too often. There haven't really been any remarkable ones lately, but this one is interesting. Nil Koltenshed, the gem cutter, has created Nentukunos, a black zircon door. She claims it as a family heirloom. Yes, that one does sound promising. Its name translates to the Withered Whale, and it's worth 48,000. A very simple item, it is a black zircon door. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It menaces with spikes of black zircon. Simple, but extremely perfect. A black zircon door. We're gonna have to do something special with that, I think. But what, I'm not too sure. Ooh, you know what? Actually, maybe I did come up with an idea for it. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think we did. We'll get back to you, Nantukunos. Uh, back down here in this hallway. Um, ah yes, look at that. Two magma crabs captured. Awesome. In the meantime, it looks like our warriors have returned. Let's have a quick look at Enfo's group. Smashes into the place. Looks like we fought some different sorts of necromancer creatures. Creatures called Oxaladgi's Hands. Hmm. Well, no matter. It doesn't look like they gave us much trouble. Yep, smashed through the place. And the second place was pretty much empty when we got there. Wonderful. And of course, we're sending them straight back out. Two more places. Let's do it. Back here at Moldath's quarters, we can see him and Burr socializing currently. It's an interesting thing for sure. Oh, you know what? Actually, right now he's reciting poetry. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh my. Well, he's currently at the third line of this particular poem, which is entitled, And He Sang Yearlings. It's an example of the wondrous loves, a form of poetry. The writing is ornate and refined. Overall, the poetry is inspired. Huh. The wondrous loves is a light poetic form concerning a lover. Okay. I'm curious if the old the old Baron here is getting some ideas. Or maybe it's just a harmless poem. That could be the case too. It is interesting to think of these two undead creatures kind of forming a connection though. Yes, it will be very interesting to see where this goes. Gonna check back in in a little bit. Up here at the entrance of our fortress, we're just putting the finishing touches on our new crab trap. And you know what? I'm thinking it looks pretty promising. I wish we got attacked more often to be perfectly frank, but it's been quite some time. I don't have my hopes up. 
Might have to stir some trouble up after we're done with those bandits. Anyways, if you have a look here, you can see this line of fortifications. And behind it are the two magma crabs in cages. Now, we're just putting the finishing touches on this fortification here. And in front of that is going to be a bridge that can be raised and lowered. And the hope is that when enemies pass through this tunnel here, if that bridge is down, then these magma crabs should be able to shoot globs of magma through that fortification. I don't know if this will work. It's not something I've ever tried before. But if it does, it'll be very amazing, I'm thinking. Also, another interesting note is that this is a male and female male magma crab. They can't be tamed, not like horn beetles. They're too stupid, unfortunately. But as long as they're locked up in here, I think there's a chance of them breeding, which would be pretty cool, don't you think? And with that, it looks like our warriors have returned once again. Let's have a look. Looks like this monastery was empty. Bunch of cowards. And there was a slaughter at the second place. Good job, et and foe. And of course, now we'll be sending out some more forces. Getting to the end of this western cluster here, and I think we'll work from the top down, kind of just smashing them into the corner of our map. They do have some tougher settlements down that way. Also, I should note that that dwarf who had its blood sucked by Burr was our messenger, and so I had to appoint a new one in case we ever have to call dwarves back home. And just for the heck of it, we decided to appoint Errol, the silent. Figured what the hell. We haven't had much work for him to do in the fortress, so yeah, I don't know. Might be interesting. I'm sure he could do the job absolutely fine, and we're going to be sending him out right away, actually. Good luck, buddy. And in the meantime, we're going to head back over to the sun, or Moldath's home, where you can see things have been changed just a little bit. We put the vampire up in her bedroom at the very top of the sun, and the dwarves lugged in some new items for her and Moldath. We have some logs in here so I could do some crafting, as well as a pick in case some mining had to be done. Moldath's in charge of that. Some more clothing, some drinks, you know, the essentials. And also, if you have a look over here, there's another necromancer. Yes, this is Zan Eidenkosh. We figured, what the hell? By the way, maybe you were wondering, uh, the, the necromancers don't sleep. Therefore, a burr can't suck their blood. So yeah, they're completely safe. Well, for the most part. Unless she starts throwing tantrums. Then we'll have problems. But for the most part, things are going very smoothly in here. I don't know that burr's mood has improved that much, but it probably has. It has to have. Yeah, they've been socializing a whole bunch in here, just kind of talking, talking, talking. It takes up most of their days. They kept checking in on their relationship, and for a while it was just a passing acquaintance. And then all of a sudden, real quick, it jumped up to close friends. So yeah, they became friends very quickly. But is a romance going to bloom? I can say honestly, I don't think that was Moldad's original plan. But I suppose you never know. Yeah, it's interesting. All three of these guys are becoming close friends. We'll just leave them to it for now, I suppose. Eventually, I thought it'd be neat if they could start work in another section of this area. Maybe some sort of a workshop or something. When this place was open for that brief time, the dwarves brought in that black zircon door. So that's sitting in here. Yeah, we might end up doing something with that. But for now, everyone's perfectly content for the most part. But something else I've been dying to mention, actually, is that, well, in that downtime that we had after Winx was incinerated by those magma crabs, believe it or not, we were actually attacked by another Etten. That's right. A third Etten. Just crazy, actually. And while well, that Etten came in, killed the dwarf, and then assaulted this one here, Kula. A dwarf we haven't seen that much, but Kula is our dungeon master, and has been for quite some time, actually. In fact, she's the one that replaced Burr after we discovered she was a vampire. So yeah, quite a few years, at least ten. Anyways, yes, that Etten bore down on Kula here. And I thought for sure she was a goner. There's no conceivable way she should have survived. Especially taking into account that at the time she was carrying a rather large boulder. She was moving extremely slowly. She could hardly escape if she wanted to. And yet, she did. You see, the Etten came after her and attacked her. And attacked her and attacked her and attacked her and attacked her. But every single time it swung, she was able to dodge away. And for the life of me, I can't figure out how she managed it. It was a stunning show. She kept dodging and dodging and dodging. She ended up getting very tired, but the Etten was equally tired. And so they were both very sluggish, just kind of barely moving around, avoiding each other. And she was up on the surface, and they both kind of worked their way into that tunnel where we now have those magma crabs. They continued dodging, dodging, dodging around all over the place. It was a pretty close call, and I wasn't sure it was going to work. But eventually, Kuleb pulled a very good move and dodged right over a cage trap. And the Etten was trapped in a cage. Isn't that something? A third Etten to drop down into the volcano. <laughs> a beautiful thing it is. Although, that being said, we were all ready to just dump this big bastard down into the magma. But we got those magma crabs now, and I really, really would like to test them out. If that whole thing doesn't work out, then we can still throw her in. I mean, it's still magma, right? The magma crabs are the messengers of the mountain. It's pretty much the same thing as dumping her into the volcano, right? I'd say so. We'll get this cage taken right out of here, and we'll set it up down in that hallway. 
Okay, and that should do it right there. Wonderful. Now if I can get somebody down here to pull this lever, the lever that controls the crab gate. There we go, thank you very much. Fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Oh, right, okay, <laughs> gotta let the end out first. Oops, got scared for a second there. <laughs> Just a moment. Please work, please be awesome. I need this. Okay, here we go. And... Not a blessed thing is happening. That is a disappointment right there. Oh, oh, oh okay. okay that, that seemed to work a little bit. Okay. Very interesting. So it looked like the Etten had to get right up next to that fortification just like, to, to set them off, I guess. But then it looks like they continue firing after it's a distance away. Hmm. Well, I don't know how useful this is going to be, honestly. If in order for it to work, the enemy has to be right up against the fortifications, you know? That might actually make it a bit useless. That's a damn shame. Plus, I mean, they did just fire a whole bunch at this and, and I don't think they hit it once. Yeah, that's a real disappointment. Oh yeah, yeah. Didn't hit her a single time. Damn it. Well, I don't know, maybe we'll just keep her in here for a little bit and see if anything happens. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, it looks like she just burst into flames, I'm not too sure why. Well, at least we got that. It looks like her left arm was struck because her arm's like completely destroyed and its fat is missing. It's a shame. I don't think this is going to work as well as I thought it would, but at least we get to watch an Etten burn to death. A worthy sacrifice. Boy, this is taking a while. I'm starting to feel a little messed up. <laughs> yeah, oh well. That's what you get. So this is taking a little longer than I thought it would. It'd be nice if we could open up our gates again. Hurry up and melt, you damn Etten. Ah, okay, there she goes. What a resilient creature. I am tempted to see what our necromancers could do with this corpse, but I don't think it would turn out very well. Best to leave it to our imagination, I think. Maybe some other day. <laughs> oh my god, that is so gross. Looking on the floor here, there's now a pool of Etten grease. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. A pool of Etten grease. Oh boy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All hail mighty Scorch Fountain. Oh yes, and you'll notice these artifacts here. It looks like we burned away the Etten and left all the good stuff behind. <laughs> Isn't that great? Most certainly. Anywho, on that note, our warriors have returned. And actually, so much time had gone by that we sent them out again. I've not yet checked any of the combat logs. Let's have a look. Attack on bottle letters. Completely uneventful. Weakened dived. Not a damn thing there. Lacy dangle. Some combat there. Man, those horn beetles seem to do pretty darn good in combat. Yet destroyed the place. Not a problem in the least. And then there was paged clobbered. Combat again. But the horn beetles did their job well. Wonderful. Good job, all. Gonna be sending them straight back out, of course. Well, it was a damn fine job, warriors. The Sable Moistness and their bandit queen are on the ropes. Only just a little bit more now and they'll be completely wiped off the face of Ored Ashi. I'm just really hoping we can track her down and put an end to her. Just to make sure she doesn't come back. Ah yes, and here we are. Aral the Silent brought that one dwarf back. Excellent. I knew he'd do well. Now, mm, can we hold up a second here? I just noticed that outside the fortress here, up in the branches of this tree, looking over the farm terrace, there's a ghost, a forlorn haunt, just kind of looking sadly out over the fortress grounds. My dwarves... We have some terrible news, because that ghastly specter out there is known to us. That there is Aral the Silent, and I really wish we had an explanation as to what happened here. Clearly something went awry on his trip, but what I do not know. That being said, it looks like he's returned home to say goodbye just one last time. The guy was one of the very first faces that we saw here in the fortress. Back in those days, he was a hero. He had gone down into the tunnels to slay some horn beetles but was unfortunately taken down. Yeah, this is a sad turn. He's been an asset and a familiar face to the fortress for many, many years. A nice memorial slab is in order, and I'm hoping that by reading it, maybe we can gain some insight into how he met his end. Rumors do tend to circulate through the fortress sometimes. Let's have a look. Hmm. Well, having a look here, and this doesn't add up. It says he was struck down by a troll, which is not the case. In fact, it says he killed the same troll he was struck down by. Yeah, okay, I guess the fortress rumors are a little confused. I know he had killed a troll, right after he came back as a damned one, and I have a feeling this is it. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the story is. 
Apparently those rumors flying around the fortress are a little muddled. I don't think we'll ever find out what happened to the guy. Oh well. What's done is done. Rest well, you good dwarf. All you good dwarves. Anyways, looks like our warriors have returned once again. Let's have a look. Mirror growls, seeming pretty standard. Mafal leads the troops into battle. And oh yeah, not even a problem. Destroyed it easy enough. And then scrape wayward, at Enfo's group. There's barely anything there at all. Well now, having a look at the zoomed out map, and doesn't that look nice? Our enemies have been weakened considerably. On all fronts, I'd say. That bandit gang only has a couple of piddling settlements left. There is another one just up to our northeast, but yeah, they're not much to talk about really. There's a couple more scattered necromancer towers up to our northwest, and then some far to the north, elven towers, I think. They should be fairly easy to erase. And then after that, we have that one a large goblin cave far to the east. Gonna have to make sure we're nice and prepared for that one though. But after that, well, the world would be nice and peaceful for us. Wouldn't that be nice? Getting close, my dwarves. Victory is at hand. And just think about how sweet it will be when our enemies are finally erased from Oredashi. And when that time comes, it'll all be thanks to the beardless Baron, Moldath. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, you bearded bastards? We're here at the end of the episode once again to talk about some behind-the-scenes stuff. And let me just start out by saying that, yes, I realize this episode's a little bit shorter than other ones. And here, let me explain that a bit. The original reason I was doing this little, uh, this little segment at the end of the episodes was to kind of, like, help myself relax a little bit. Believe it or not, these episodes take a long, long time to get out. And so I didn't, like, you know, end up dying i decided for this series i would try this out maybe like you know make a 27 minute long episode and put three minutes at the end of just me talking maybe show off some fan artwork it'll be easy but i've noticed the episodes getting longer and longer as time has gone on to the point where it's just a normal episode with a big segment at the end of me talking and fan artwork which i'm sure is great to a lot of people but guys i'm gonna kill myself i've got a serious problem here i'm like a workaholic or something maybe some of you have noticed I can manage it, and that's what I'm doing right here, okay? <laughs> Just, that's my little explanation right there. This isn't me being lazy. This is me struggling to not work like a maniac, okay? Please, your understanding is much appreciated. Anyways, yes, that was a wild episode. Did some pretty cool stuff. I can't believe we've burned through all of our enemies that quickly. I don't think I've ever had a Dwarven Fortress do so well on raids. But yeah, this one's just slamming through the world. That paired with the fact that we haven't seen many sieges, well, I was kind of boosting my confidence a whole bunch, actually. I don't know how things will go when we try to take on that goblin cave over to the east, but I suppose we're going to have to take a stab at it at some point, right? I don't really want to lose all our warriors, certainly not, but well, I guess you can't know till you try, right? We could send at least 40 warriors in, paired with our 20 war horn beetles. And, well, I don't know. They don't have a demon there, so it would just be goblins and probably Testry's warriors or something. They shouldn't give us too much trouble, I'm hoping. I guess we'll see. Let's hope those aren't famous last words, right? Oh, and one last thing too, that Etten, just a pool of Etten grease. <laughs> oh my. I don't know, I thought that was pretty funny. Anyways, my bearded bastards, I thank you sincerely for joining me here today. It's much appreciated. I do hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I certainly hope you'll be joining me next time here in Athlestizafon. This is Scorch Fountain. And until then, my bearded bastards. Mm -hmm.